Good morning to you. Greetings from my kitchen pulpit. I'm Karen Clymer. We are needing bread for the master. I'm a silver citizen. I'm happy to be able to work for the Lord in accordance with Titus chapter 2. He tells us that as silver citizens, the older must be living the life and example and teaching the younger. I count it an honor and a privilege, and I'm so glad to be able to do this. The Lord laid on my heart to do kneading bread for the master while I did a video. So that's what we've been doing so for about a year now. Say, so may, may the Lord bless you and help you today as we minister God's word. Let's believe the Lord to help us today in a special way. Lord, we put our faith and trust in you. We believe you. We're trusting in you and knowing, Lord, that you are the one true God. There's none other beside you. We put our whole trust, faith, confidence, our whole weight upon you. Thank you, Lord, that you're helping us today to minister your word. And everyone that listens, Lord, sees this. May they be blessed and helped and encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. The Lord laid the scripture on my heart. In fact, he spoke to me Sunday when I had gone in to have my prayer time with the Lord. Suddenly, he spoke to my heart these words before I even had gotten into my prayer time. And it was, the eternal God is thy refuge. And so I looked that up. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 27. It says, the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. And listen to this. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Our God is a great God and he looks out for his children. The title of our devotion today is simply that the eternal God is your refuge. Remember to personalize that. The eternal God is your refuge. Now I'm going to be needing this bread. Why do I need bread? Those who've listened know it makes it stronger because it binds it all together. I'll tell you what I did today. I thought I would just bring the finished product. I talked about that. But when the finished product is done, it's going to look something like this. And I hope there, there may be a glare on this. But this is a finished product that I had made uh, some time back. And I freeze them and then put, put I have them in the freezer. And then I'm able to go and get them when I want to give them, they said they're like for funeral dinners or maybe just friends or something to come by, I like to be able to give them uh, some rolls. So this, and why I'm able to do this is that there was a lady who shared her recipe with me and her starter. So that's what I have done. I've done what was done for me and I want to bless others with that. Okay. You be blessed today as we listen. Now here we go. We got to knead this bread for 10 minutes. Here we are. Let's get started. So as we See here, do, I, I asked the question uh, that came to my mind. Do you sometimes feel like you're just being mauled by the devil? Uh, this is what had been happening to me. When I would go in to pray, it was just like I was being mauled by the devil. I just, uh, it seemed like I couldn't get anywhere. You, have you had those times? I, I think you probably can identify with that. In fact, I'm fully confident that you can. But you know, the Lord wants to help us. And even though you don't feel him, you don't see him at that time like that. It's a very miserable time. But I, what do you do? You keep on praying. You pray anyway. And there I've been going through that time that it just seemed like it's, you know, you can't live in the scenes. It seemed like, and, I, and my feelings, if I'd gone my feelings, it just felt like I was wasting my time. But it is not a waste of time to call out on God and to talk of him, to him of his greatness, his power, and his might whether we feel it or not. Like I said, you don't live by your feelings and you don't live in the scenes. It seems like this and it seems like that. But God honors faithfulness. And I believe it was God in his graciousness that he, has, he knew what was going on. And you might say, well, he shouldn't have allowed it. Well, he does allow it because he wants to see who we are. Well, he already knows who we are, but he wants us to see where we are and he wants to know if we're going to depend on him. He wants us to see ourselves for who we are. You know, all we like sheep have gone astray. Now, sheep are cute little things, but let's just face the fact they're not the smartest things. They, uh, you know, they get into trouble if they don't stay with the shepherd. It's important that you follow the shepherd. So, the Lord isn't insulting us, but he's certainly not uh, telling us, you know, how strong you are on your own. He's telling you he, that you need a shepherd, and that's why I'm here. I'm your shepherd. I'm helping you. So, when you go through these times, it feel like, feels like you're being mauled by the devil. The Lord impressed this on my heart, and I just felt immediately he's addressing what I've been going through. He said he was letting me know. You know, we need, we, it's wonderful when he reminds us. 
when he reminds us things we already know when he says the eternal God is your refuge it's like, oh well, that was talking to, to Israel back in, in, in Deuteronomy I know it was but you know what it's just like do uh, parents say the same thing to all their children maybe at different times but you know they say the same thing so it's, it's you know it's, it's for us this message is for us too and it is so true the eternal God is your refuge eternal God this one doesn't die. No, he's eternal, and he's always there for us. What is a refuge? It's a safe place. It's a safe place. My dad has told when he was in the uh, in World War II how the when they, the bombs when the siren would go off, and he said you would get to that bomb shelter. He said we had a man that would literally run over you to get to the bomb shelter. Why? It was a safe place, and he didn't want to miss it. Oh, we have a safe place with the Lord. Yes, we're going to be going through some things, but as the song says, I want to be going through things with the Lord. I want to be going through things with Him, with His my helper, knowing He's with me. He's watching me. I may not see Him. I may not feel Him, but I'm fully confident and know that He is faithful and He is there with me. So that's an easier way to go through a situation. We are instructed and when we feel like we're being mauled like this, it says we're instructed and we're empowered to resist the devil and he will flee from us. That is in James chapter 4 and verse 7 through 10. 10. The scripture says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be learnt, turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of God, and he will lift you up. I love those scriptures. Apply them. Personalize them. These are for us. And if we're waiting for all of a sudden this, this joy just to come, it likely won't. So the thing we have to do is come back to the Lord, and we begin to worship him, glorify him, pray for others. That's what we have to do is to stand strong in the Lord in the power of his might. He's come in the refuge, you can be healed. In the refuge of things you're going through and uh, distressing things that you're experiencing, uh, that you, we can call out to God in the refuge. And we're safe. So we're safe with Him, the Lord. Is, and see, the eternal God is your refuge, my refuge. So we call out to Him and know we're safe with Him. He hears, He knows, He cares, and He's guiding us in all of this time. It's a time of refreshing. And this is what, when Jesus would talk to his disciples, and he was encouraging and refreshing them, he would bring them to himself, and he would talk to them and encourage them. And then what did he tell them? He didn't say, now you go find you a safe place, you get in the bomb shelter, uh, they're going to be mad at you, and they're not going to like you. That's not what he told them. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, he told them to preach the good news. And so that's what he's saying to us. And we're doing that. We're actually preaching, whether you're called to preach as far as a minister of the gospel, like the Lord called me as a nine-year-old girl. But it's that when you're called uh, to, you know, and we're all, he's chosen us. He wants us to live for him. Not everybody chooses to do it. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, got to believe in him, we're not, should not perish but have everlasting life. He has called our very life as we live it is an example to those that are lost. And may it encourage them as they see us living in faith and victory and confidence and see how God ministers and meets our needs. That should be an encouragement to others to live for the Lord and want to make the same choice. The Bible said resist the devil and he will flee from you. I believe I've already read that. But uh, we need to submit ourselves to the Lord but resist the devil. Now. The devil is not going to stay away. People have heard one man say he'd come back to the Lord, he'd backslide, come back to the Lord and backslide. Well, he said, I thought I could live for the Lord for, well, for a while before the Lord jumped on me, but said he jumped. Well, what, what do you mean? You should expect it. He doesn't want us to live for, for the Lord. So that Satan is out to, to capture us and wants us to go back into sin. No, we want to be faithful and true to the Lord and know that he will help us and guide us every step of the way. Okay, now let's read, it said, draw near to God, he'll draw nigh to you, and also talked about not being double-minded. That's what there's in that scripture in James, it talked about that, not being, but purify your hearts, do not be double-minded. 
if you've been around people that are double-minded, I'll tell you what, you don't even want to be around them. You don't, uh, they're kind of dangerous people. You don't want to have any kind of a, I say, a business deal with them. We don't want to be double-minded in, in that we want to live for God and then when we get in trouble then, and we want to be like everybody else around us. No, we want to be just strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, loving the Lord and knowing the Lord knows He can count on us. That's the thing, being truly faithful to Him. And it talks here, the eternal God will keep us from stumbling. I love this scripture, that we can trust in Him, and He and in our, the test of our faith that goes, we can still put our faith and trust and confidence in Him and know that He will be with us and He will lift us up. He is able to keep or guard us. Yes, He is guarding us. He is watching over us. As we go through every situation, in whether it's business deals, whether it's on the job, or whether it's as a retired person like my husband and I are, you're still, you're living the life. You're an example of believers in your words and in your deeds, wherever we go. Are you being mauled by the devil? I believe, I know the Lord didn't give this to me. It wasn't closed circuit just for me. There's somebody else out there. You're going through a time when you're trying to pray and it's as though you're getting nowhere. I heard Pastor Kent Christmas, and I like to listen to him. I uh, listen to him. He's on Wednesday after we come in from church. Well, I'll listen to his. He has a teaching. It's usually about 20 minutes. And he was talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. He was talking about the importance how fire, how that it, uh, he said, it ha there's power in it. And also, you want to be, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, fire that can, uh, devour impurities and fire that can empower us and help us to be what we ought to be for the Lord. And the scripture tells us that he will present us blameless uh, in Jude. Jude is of course only one chapter, verse 24 uh, through 20, I believe it's 20, uh, 25. Now to him who is able to keep you, guard you, to him that is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen we can make it to heaven we, when it feels like I just can't I'm, I can't be perfect I, I feel like I, I make mistakes we all do we're human beings we do that's why we have a shepherd in our Jesus the Good Shepherd, he's been on earth. He knows what it is to experience the things that we did because he experienced them. He knows what it is to be lonely. He knows what it is to be rejected. He knows what it is to be loved, too, when people were just wild about him and just saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. To and they thought he was going to be the conqueror, conquering king, and, and they would be out under the rule of the Romans. They had the whole wrong idea within a week. They were ready to stone him, not only stone him, but to hang him on a cross, and they did. So it's a terrible thing when people do such a thing as that. But Jesus knows what it is to be rejected. He knows what it is to suffer a horrible, agonizing death on the cross. But he was willing to do it to bring about our salvation. Now, none of us have suffered that kind of thing because we're still here. We don't know what the future holds, but I know this that I'm going to be in the safe place. I'm going to stay true to the Lord, His help and grace. I'm going to pray whether I feel anything or not. I'm glad to say that after the Lord impressed on my heart that day and brought that scripture made it so real to me, that when I went into my next prayer time, it was different. I'm so thankful for that. I, you know, We have the times, though, that it seems dry, and it seems, but keep right on praying. Keep doing the right thing. As they say, keep putting one foot in front of the other. I want to close with uh, one final thing that, that made an impression on me. It just kept coming to me, and I felt like it's what the Lord wanted me to bring. I had uh, heard of, and I looked up online and saw where I lived back in the 80s. There was a, a gentleman that, he was a photographer, and he wanted to, uh, he wanted to jump from a plane, wanted to uh, have a parachute, and he wanted to, to jump. So he had, he, he'd, at this particular time, he was watching others. He was there in the plane. And he was making sure that everybody had their parachutes on before they would jump. 
Well, it came time that he was going to jump, and because he was a photographer, he wanted to uh, photograph this, so he had his the photography equipment on, and so he jumped, and all of a sudden people noticed when it came time for him to pull the rip cord, and you saw him ripping there. He was trying pulling, and pulling for that rip, pulling, trying to find it, where, where couldn't find it, and suddenly you saw the horror, the, the look on his face, because it was all being photographed. This man had forgotten to put his parachute on. In all of his, he had helped others as they had gone. He'd been in the plane. He was observing. He made sure they had their parachutes on. And they said the only, it's supposed to be, I think, that the pilot makes sure everybody has their parachutes on for sure. It's his responsibility. And they think that he apparently mistook the photography equipment for his parachute. That man fell to his death. You know what? I want to make my calling and election sure. I'm going to call out to the Lord now. You're out there and you need the Lord. You want to live for him. If you've hesitated, you weren't sure if you could do it, yes, you can because God will be with you. The eternal God is your refuge. I'm going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 26. There is no one like the God of Jezreel who rides the heavens to help you. And his excellency on the clouds, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Then Israel shall dwell in safety, the fountain of Jacob alone, in a land of grain and new wine. His heavens shall drop dew. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty. Your enemies shall submit to you, and you shall tread down their high places. Remember this, the eternal God is your refuge. And remember this, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And never forget this, it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. That's Philippians 2 and 13. I can tell you this for sure, he has a purpose. He has a purpose. He is a God. He is a God of purpose. He has a purpose, a wonderful plan for your life, and you'll never know it until you get in there and live for it. So do that. Live for it. I recommend Jesus. I've been living for him since I was nine years old. Here I am, 72 years old. Yes. And I've been faithful to the Lord. I've made mistakes, but you know what? I come to the Lord and ask God for his help and forgiveness and guidance and direction, and he picks me up and helps me and you keep going for him. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Until next Friday, the Lord willing, we'll see you at 1130.